On today's episode of Murfreesboro Storytellers, we travel to the end of North Manny Avenue to tour the most famous home in Murfreesboro, Oakland's Mansion. Oakland's was an important fixture in this community in the 1800s and played a role during the Civil War. Today, thousands visit this grand old home as it's one of the city's major historic attractions. Welcome to Storytellers. We're delighted to be coming to you from Oakland's Historic House Mansion, located in downtown Murfreesboro. And our special guest today is James Manning, Executive Director of Oakland's. James, welcome. Thank you, Mr. Hood. Glad to be here. How long have you been in this position with Oakland's? It's been just over 11 years. 11 years. Yes, Made sir. a lot of progress during those years. I hope so. I like to think that. We're in some of the early history of Murfreesboro, right here in this mansion. Tell us about how this mansion came to be. Who were the original owners? Dr. James Manny, M-A-N-E-Y, right. and his wife, Sally Hardy Murphy Manny. Uh, Sally's father was, do was uh, Colonel Hardy Murphy, All right. and this was her inheritance from her father, not the structure, but the land on which she and her husband built it. Um, she inherited it in 1815, so this is the 200th anniversary of Sally Sally's land inheritance. So Manny Avenue leading up to the mansion was named for the Manny family as well. Yes, sir. It was the driveway all the way to Lytle Street. And after the Civil War, they created the first subdivision in Murfreesboro uh, called Manny's Edition. And now that's North Manny Avenue. Will you be setting up a number of events to celebrate the anniversary of the, of the building of the home? Yes, sir. Throughout the next five years, because in 1820 is the first record we have of the Manny's right. living here because of the 1820 census. So if folks want to follow us on Facebook, uh, look at our website and hopefully become a member of Oakland's. What is uh, your website, by the way? Oaklandsmuseum.org. Yeah, very good. And you can become a member there. You can follow us online. You can sign up for the newsletter. And you can find out about all of these events that are going to be happening for the next five years. James is a young boy living on North Church Street, not too many blocks away from here. A group of us used to come over here and play and have maneuvers. And I remember this. <laughs> house had just been decimated by vandalism, I presume. How did it get from there to somebody taking it, preserving it, and, and maintaining it, and bringing it into the beautiful home that you have here now? Well, in 1959, plans were made public to demolish the mansion. Uh, there were tennis courts and swimming pools on the grounds. Public housing was being developed behind it, and there was no plan to keep the mansion. Uh, and a group of ladies that uh, wanted to save the mansion got together at the Woman's Club and they organized and they petitioned the city and the city thought that that would be a benefit for tourism for the area and they were glad for the ladies to ta tackle this preservation effort. Um, they started with bake sales literally in the beginning uh, but they had uh, workhouse uh, help and they uh, did what they could to get it open for tours very quickly mm -hmm. and uh, they were glad to be able to be an asset to the tourism of Rutherford County, and that's still the arrangement today. Yes, I guess the Recreation Department swimming pool then eventually moved out from the area, and you had strictly the Oakland's property, I guess. Yes, sir. Today, the grounds are known as Oakland's Park. Mm -hmm. uh, it's owned by the city of Murfreesboro, uh, not the mansion uh, or the acre that it's on, but the rest of the grounds. And they're managed by Murfreesboro Parks and Recreation, and they do a beautiful job with our grounds. The grounds are a native tree arboretum. Uh, it's a natural spring, which of course is why the plantation was established here, was because of that spring. And then Oakland's Association owns the mansion, the visitor center, and the buildings here, and runs Oakland's Historic House Museum. Um, so it's a great partnership between the city and Oakland's Association. Where does your funding come from these days after having bake sales in your early years? <laughs> Fortunately, we're not having to have too many bake sales these days, but uh, we get funding from the city, from the county, from private donations, from grants, and from membership. And that's the biggest thing that the community can do to help take part in the preservation for this building and so that we can meet our mission to educate to preserve and preserve to educate in the future by becoming a member and attending the events to uh, join in the preservation efforts with your membership dollars and uh, you can do that at our website or come see us and take a tour. What was the original size of the acreage uh, for the plantation? They started with um, just a small tract of land. In 1850, she inherited uh, less than 200 acres. Mm -hmm. And uh, from that, they were able to grow to 1,500 acres at the, by the end of the 
by the beginning mm -hmm. of the Civil War. It was a 1,500 acre plantation. Uh, this house was in sort of the front corner of the land. To get an idea of how it stretched, Northfield Boulevard was named for the north field of the plantation. Okay. Uh, Evergreen Cemetery started as the burial ground for the slaves of Oakland's plantation. A lot of history then tied up there. That, that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Didn't Congressman uh, Bart Gordon, uh, was he instrumental in getting grants to do some of the development here for the property as well? Yes, sir. Um, in the 90s, um, Park Gordon, Mr. Uh, uh, Gordon and some members of the community began talking about ways to improve the grounds here and to improve Oakland's Park. Um, the ball fields that were here uh, needed a lot of repair and the pavilions did too. So they developed a plan to uh, replace the infrastructure of the park to make it more in keeping with the historic nature of the mansion and then to implement the native tree arboretum. So they planted all of the trees of Tennessee that are native that will grow here in Middle mm -hmm. Tennessee uh, and remove the exotic invasive plant life um, signs or place interpretive signs on the ground. So even if you don't come for a tour, uh, you can walk the grounds of Oakland's Park anytime and learn about the manis and the plantation and how it went from a plantation to a park today. Do we still have any of the Manny family uh, living in this area? Any of their descendants? Uh, Edie Manny is oh. an artist uh, that lives in Nashville that's one of our members that comes to uh, our events and she's uh, a close friend of ours and she keeps us in contact with some of the other Manny um, descendants. Uh, Betty Manny, her sister, uh, was a good friend of Oakland's and uh, left an endowment for the museum uh, mm -hmm. to help uh, perpetually care for this house. Now you have a board of directors that oversees the operation of the, uh, the mansion and the, and the museum? Yes sir, Oakland's Association Board of Trustees is a group of 18 and they are uh, the overseeing body mm -hmm. of Oakland's Association which operates Oakland's Historic House Museum, of which we have Oakland's Mansion, sure. the primary piece. Uh, so many names to confuse everybody. It's mm -hmm. funny though, we don't know what the Manny's called this place. Uh, we've not yet found a first-hand document that has Lewis or Adeline or James or Sally mm -hmm. Manny referring to this property. Uh, we know that the Roberts, the Darrows, the Jatons that lived here after the Manny's referred to it as Oak Manor. Oak Manor, okay. Mm -hmm. Now the Darrows were the successors to the many ownership. Is that yes, correct? sir. Yes, sir. George Darrow's family uh, purchased Oakland's at auction. Uh, after Lewis Manny died, he left the plantation um, in the hands of his wife. She okay. was already the owner. She had been left it uh, in name by her uh, father-in-law, Dr. James Manny. Mm -hmm. uh, but Adeline wasn't able to keep the house after the Civil War. There was no slave uh, labor to rebuild the plantation that has had been built and. They sold tracks uh, to the city of Murfreesboro for Evergreen Cemetery. It developed uh, Manny's Edition in front, and everybody that bought a lot on Manny's Edition had the right to uh, Manny Spring. And so it was still supporting from uh, the Native Americans that came here to the plantation that grew here to the first uh, subdivision owners in Manny's Edition were all coming here because of the water of that spring. Very good. Let's talk a little bit about the mansion itself. And we're located in, would this be the living room where we're? We call it the front parlor and front that's parlor. how they would use it. Yes, okay. sir. And entertaining their best guests. This was the primary entertainment room in Oakland's mansion um, from about 1860, 1858, we think is about the time they finished this room. We don't know exact date uh, and see the Civil War. Uh, was upon them very quickly. So they had only a few short years to enjoy this front addition on the mansion, which is everything you see when you come up the driveway. It was built by the second generation. How many square feet in the in the house? Just about 9,000. Okay. And the other rooms, uh, tell us a little bit about the, what else is here. What's fascinating about the house mm -hmm. is how it evolved and enlarged. The Manny's started with a two-room brick structure, mm -hmm. a hall and parlor house, and it's still here. Everything is still here. They built around it. In the 20s, they added on the 1820s, and the 1830s and 40s, a second story to the original two-room cabin and a back wing, all done by the first generation. But it was the second generation. Um, when Dr. Manny's wife, Sally, passed away, he gave the plantation not to his son, but to his daughter-in-law, Rachel Adeline Cannon Manny. She was a uh, daughter of Governor Newton Cannon, the first Whig governor of the state of Tennessee. And she and her husband, Lewis, built this Italian addition onto the front of the house just on the eve of the Civil War. That's the same Cannon family for whom Cannonsburg is named, I presume. Yes, sir, in Cannon County. Cannonsburg, the first name of this town, 
Uh, so you have the ancestors of the Murphys, the Mannies, and the Cannons all coming together here. Mm -hmm. And so it's really a great way for people who are new to this area or just want to learn more about it to come here and learn about the founding of the city mm -hmm. and the area. How large of a, a kitchen area do you have here? There's no kitchen no anymore. Kitchen. There's not. The kitchen was demolished. Um, when the ladies took on Oakland's to save the house, the kitchen had been converted to a garage. Uh -oh. The floor was gone, the roof had collapsed, and there just wasn't enough at that time to save. It's something we'd love to rebuild in the future. There's a root cellar and a kitchen um, mm. behind the house. The foundation of the kitchen is underground, and the root cellar was dug up and restored um, by archaeological students and professors at MTSU in 1976. Mm. And today we're working on a drainage project, project mm -hmm. to get water away from the foundation of the mansion. And a part of that project, we hope, will soon incorporate excavating the root cellar and restoring the structure above it so that students can learn more about food preservation here at Oakland. So the kitchen was a separate building from the, the original house then? It was detached, only connected by a breezeway mm -hmm. because of fire and heat in the summertime. It was hot enough in the house without all the cooking that was done to take care of a plantation this large. You mentioned the MTSU archaeological students. Do you have a lot of relationships with that department, MTSU, and others to help you? In We're building your our relationships with that department and, and maintaining relationships with many uh, departments in MTSU. Um, right now we have Wedding Dresses Through the Decades exhibit, which is up and through March 8th, and that is in conjunction with the Department of Human Sciences at MTSU. We have uh, tours from many of the different departments, uh, students that are learning to interpret and to give tours and to tell history or um, parks and recreation students, um, decorating students, architecture. It's amazing the different ways that we can incorporate um, the uh, history of Oaklands into uh, so many different areas. If the professors are interested and the program uh, chairs are interested, we can make it work. Okay, very good. Oakland, I know, has a number of uh, community events during the course of the year. Uh, I guess somewhat fundraisers as well as bringing <laughs> folks into the uh, area and mm -hmm. making them more familiar with what you have here. All of our events are open to the public and we do have membership and we hope that anyone that wants to will join. Um, all of our fundraising events are open to the public. We have a spring fiesta coming up the first of May. We have an annual Christmas gala here at Oakland's. You can find out information about that on our website or on Facebook or by giving us a call. We'd love to tell you more about it. Uh, right now, Wedding Dresses of the Decades is up to March 8th. We have a lot of educational programs. Mm -hmm. uh, Antebellum Academy School for Girls, Washing, Training and Learning, and Autumn in the Oaks. Mm -hmm. There's really something for everybody. That's good. Wonderful. Tell us more about your board of directors for Oakland, some of the folks that are involved in that uh, with your programs. Well, uh, our last Board of Trustees meeting, um, our recording secretary, Margie Weatherford, brought to us a uh, photograph that we were so glad to have. Mm. It was of George Darrow, uh, who owned this house, the first millionaire in Rutherford County, had the first car in the area. We thought we had a photograph of him, but never one that was identified until then. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things out there in the community, and our Board of Trustees members are always out there as activists for us, helping us spread the word about Oakland's and helping us get for more information too. A photograph of Darrow here at the home? No, no, he wasn't here. He was just standing in nature as okay. a background. I'm not sure where he was, but he was identified. And we do have a photograph now that we know is him okay. of here at the home. Wonderful. And he later built a beautiful home on East Main Street, which still stands. Yes, sir. He and his wife entertained quite a bit, and she wanted to be closer to town. Oakland's was a little bit far removed from in Main Street. In those days it was, in I'm those sure. Days. Uh -huh. And they built a more modern house with a ballroom on the mm. third floor for their entertaining. That's wonderful. A lot of history here. With so many of the names that you mentioned are those that we've always known about over the years with the history of Murfreesboro, the Mannies, the, the Murfreys, the Darrows. Uh, so many mm -hmm. others uh, mm -hmm. that, that have the ties back to this wonderful home. Yes, sir. After the Darrows, the Roberts uh, bought this house, uh, and uh, Robert Street in front is named for the family. Um, several generations of the Roberts uh, women have been uh, heavily involved in Oakland's uh, in the preservation efforts through the years. And um, we, in this uh, recent summer exhibit, we at interpreted more of the history of the Darrows, the Roberts, and Jatons. Mm -hmm. uh, Oakland's is restored to the 1860s period now. Uh, and so we don't, on every tour, talk much about the families that lived here after the Mannies. Uh, but through temporary exhibits, 
such as the one uh, that I was mentioning, we're able to tell more of the story of these families and we found out um, more ancestry than we knew and through that exhibit we found interior photographs of the uh, Roberts time here at Oakland's photographs in the parlors and the upper halls that we had never seen before. There are so many things that uh, members of the community might have that they just don't realize Oakland's would like to uh, see. We can take photographs and scan them and give you the originals back if you have a photograph that is something that in any decade uh, that's fascinating about Oakland's or the grounds here that you or your family have enjoyed or that you've just found along the way, we'd love to uh, share it with you. So if anybody watching or listening has a photograph they'd like to share with you, what, what should they do? Give you a call? Give me a call. Mm -hmm. uh, bring it by and let us scan it and we'll give you the original back. I'm sure you're right. There must be lots of photographs that are <clears throat> embedded in a lot of the families here that go way back and maybe not even be totally aware of their connection, say, to Oakland's, as a matter of fact. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There's a lot of people that enjoyed the grounds and the park here. Um, maybe they've got photographs of the mansion before it was restored. Uh, maybe they've got family uh, photographs of, uh, taken on the grounds. Mm -hmm. There's so many different things that we'd like to share with our community uh, and really let our community be a part of Oakland's. James, you've referenced the, the wedding dress exhibit that is going on now <laughs> uh, at, at Oakland's, and tell us a little bit more about that, and then we'll move over and take a look at that. This is the fourth year of an award-winning exhibit, Wedding Dresses of the Decades. It starts with wedding gowns as early as the 1860s, and you progress around the room to the modern bride. Uh, and we have a Vera Wang dress this year mm. uh, for 2014, and the dresses are different every year. They're not all formal gowns. Some of them are simple dresses. Some of them are from um, other countries or from other areas, but most of them from Rutherford County, and most of them are members of the community right here that wanted to be a part of Oakland's, mm -hmm. and they wanted to share uh, in a new way uh, that we have to reach out to our community. We learn more about their families, and we learn more about how that they would like to become involved here. And there's a, a small admission charge, I believe, for the display. The exhibit's eight dollars, but if you take a tour of the mansion and the exhibit, you'll get a discount. Okay, get your money's worth. Yeah, uh, we think so. For sure. If you don't think so, we'll refund your money. I'm sure of that. <laughs> well, we've enjoyed talking with you, James. James Manning, the executive director of Oakland's Historic House Mansion and Museum, and we'll now move over to the other building, the, the Manning Hall, I believe, and yes, we'll sir. see the wedding dress exhibit. Thank, Thank you, you very much, and congratulations on the great job you're doing for Oakland's. Thank you, sir. Glad to have you. We've moved now from the mansion over to Manny House, and we're pleased to welcome Mary Beth Nevels, who is Educational Director for Oakland. Welcome, Mary Beth. Thank you, glad you're here. Tell us about your duties as Educational Director. Well, I plan the field trips that come to the mansion and to okay. the grounds, and a lot of the programming that we offer to our community. Manny Hall gives you opportunity for many different events, I would assume. Well, it does. Uh, right now we have our exhibit mm -hmm. going, but we also have um, other opportunities, we have book signings and lecture series that okay. we enjoy um, presenting, as well as uh, it hosts weddings on the weekends and oh, okay. uh, uh, baby showers, family reunions, business meetings. And I remember a lot of nice luncheons here in this room as well. A lot of nice luncheons and dinners and Christmas parties. Oh. And well, we're right now in Manny Hall, as I said, but you have a very, very special exhibit here, Wedding Dresses Through the Decades. This is our fourth year. How did this get started? Well, it all kind of got started through Polly Ridley. Wonderful. Uh, she was on our board of directors and is a past regent, and all she right. had just passed away. And uh, we're sitting in the office talking about her and remembered seeing her wedding portrait mm -hmm. hanging on the wall of her house. And in the winter months here at Oakland's, things slow down a little bit. We were trying to think of maybe what we could do to occupy our time sure. and the facility and thought, well, what if we get her wedding dress and maybe a few of the other board members and put them out and let people come and see them. And so we started asking around mm -hmm. and they did not have Miss Polly's dress any longer, but we ended up with 25 gowns that first, that first year. year. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. And that's grown to how many now? 58 this year. That's wonderful. They come from all over different parts of the community? Or? Well, they do. They come from all over the country, but they have community ties. It might be people that have lived here and moved on or people who are new to Murfreesboro. And they hear about it and then bring or send their, their dresses here for display? Mm -hmm. They're placed on loan for the eight-week exhibit. All right. So they have gotten them out of the back of their closets and Not under sure. their beds and 
brought them to us, and then when we're done, we'll pack them back up nice and neat, and they'll take them back home. Now, Oakland owns a few of these dresses, is that correct? We do. We own five or six, and they're the only ones that repeat in the exhibit. Mm -hmm. All of the others are new every year. New every year. Mm -hmm. uh, do they have ties back to Oakland's property originally, the, these, the ones that you own? No, they don't. Just through the years, they've been donated to our okay. collection. Right. We have an archive, and uh, we do have some wedding dresses, and then we have um, clothing from several different decades. Mm -hmm. Any unusual dresses here? They're all beautiful. Well, they are all beautiful, and they all have a different story. Okay. Uh, you know, we've had the pleasure to meet all of the brides and sit down with them and get their stories. And to be able to include those stories with the dress makes it even more special. Very good. And a number of these people still living in the community, I presume. That, yes, uh, they, yes, and they have been by to see their dresses, and they bring their children and grandchildren because a wedding dress is not something you typically get out and show off. True. You keep it, you know, tucked away nice and safe to preserve it. And so this is an opportunity to show their family. I know you have a number of photographs too of their, their wedding occasion. Whenever possible, we've included a photograph mm -hmm. uh, of the bride in their dress. And it's really nice to go back and see, especially the black and white photos. Uh, and you have the dresses next to them and not all the dresses are white. That's interesting. Now, you've been involved also with MTSU with this project, I believe. Yes, this is the fourth year that they have partnered with us on the exhibit. It's the Department of Human Sciences. Right. And we have about half of the dress forms from their department. And then this year, for the first time, we have three dresses from their textile collection. Oh, wonderful. And they will then go back to MTSU once your yes. the, the program is over then. Yes. What are the hours of your availability here? For visitors? Well, the exhibit is open seven days a week, okay. uh, Monday through Saturday, 10 to 4, and Sundays, 1 to 4. And we do have some Friday evenings that will keep it open until 8. So, uh, admission to come and vi visit the, the display, right? It's $8 per person. Okay. Mm -hmm. Another fundraiser for Oakland's opportunity. Well, it is, and it's the winter months when our visitors from out of town and around the country uh, might not be out traveling. They're stuck at home maybe in their areas. Sure. And so this is an opportunity for our local community to come and for us to share things that are going on here. You mentioned dresses from around the country. Mm -hmm. What would be the farthest distance away that you have a, a dress on display, you recall? Well, the farthest is probably one that we happen to own and it's from Canada. Oh, okay. Uh, it was donated to us several years ago and it's from the 1890s. Wonderful. Many of these dresses uh, go back several years, I presume. Uh, our oldest dress on exhibit this year is 1847, and then it was worn again in 1907. What is that connection locally? Uh, the granddaughter of the bride who wore it in 1907 uh, is the one that placed it on exhibit. Okay. Well, that's, that's just a wonderful, wonderful exhibit with so many historical moments that are, that are recorded here. Yeah, everything from where they got married to maybe where they purchased their dress um, to maybe the people who came to visit from out of town. And all of those stories are what makes their day special. I know you even have a, a, part, a part of a suit of one of your grooms in the past. I <laughs> we believe. do, and it's hard to get suits. Um, typically, uh, you know, now they rent their tuxedo and they sure. send them back. Uh, in the 40s and 50s, uh, they would have maybe worn a suit or a uniform if they were in military, uh, but their suits, are not something they really kept back in the closet. It's what they wore to church and they wore to work. So to have a suit to show is a, a neat experience. And that's Mr. Bill Allen's. And a lot of people in the community know he and his wife, Miss Idley. Yeah, so it's Bill really Idley, right. it's really nice to have um, his suit and her dress. Any other interesting ties like that that you have with any of the dis displays that are here? Well, uh, one of our past regents is Mary Sale Corlew. Yes. We're fortunate enough to have her dress this year. And then we also have her granddaughters, which oh. she's our newlywed in the exhibit. She was just married in September 2014. So you have several in here where there are more than one generation in the family, is that correct? Yes, and several of the dresses were worn by mother and daughter. Same dress. Same dress. Oh, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that, that's a good use of uh, the, the clothing of men. Well, wedding dresses can be timeless. Absolutely. How long will your display continue on, on the calendar? The exhibit runs through March the 8th. All right. March the 8th. Admission is $8. $8. And remind us of the hours again. 10 to 4, Monday through Saturday, 1 to 4 on Sundays. 
and if you miss it this year, we'll do it again next year oh, in January. What do you have coming up after this display? Well, we are getting ready for spring, and we have two events in uh, May. We have our spring fundraiser, which is a party that will be held at the home of Ronnie and Donna Barrett. Mm -hmm. And then we're gearing up for our spring field trips. Uh, we have days of washing, turning, and learning where children will come and do hands-on chores of the 1800s. All right. Mary Beth Nevels, the Educational Director for Oakland, we thank you very much for joining us in, on our program and bringing us to wedding dresses through the decades. Thank you. Thank you so much.